Recording in progress. Okay, I'd like to call the uh, Essex Town Select Board meeting for Monday, June 6th, 2022 to order. Um, first uh, item on the agenda, any agenda additions or changes from staff? Uh, one item from staff would like to add an item in executive session to update you on pending or probable litigation. Okay, thank you, Greg. Any changes from board members? None. Okay. Um, so can I have a motion to amend and approve the agenda? I make the motion and we amend the agenda as um, requested. That approved. Second. Okay, thank you, Don. Thank you, Tracy. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Vote. Opposed? Okay. Uh, so you did say and approve, correct? Yeah, okay, great. So we've uh, got the agenda updated. The uh, next uh, item on the agenda is public to be heard. Public to be heard is a time when uh, residents can speak to the uh, board on uh, topics that are not on the agenda. If you'd like to um, speak during public to be heard, you can either raise your hand in the room uh, or use the raise your hand feature on um, in Zoom. Um, if you'd like to speak, please be brief. Uh, please address your remarks to me. Um, please be civil. Um, if you are attending uh, remotely, please uh, keep your camera off and yourself muted so to uh, avoid distraction unless you've been recognized uh, as a speaker. And um, then we'll move forward. I saw Betsy Dunn's hand go up first. So Betsy, come on up. Good evening. I'm Betsy Dunn, Essex Town. Um, and I don't know if that's our name or not. Uh, you know, us, well, yeah, we're, we're, well we're I was at a Democratic town. meeting the other night, and, uh, and they were calling us TAS, Town After Separation, which seemed very punitive. Um, but what that brings to me when I was sitting there listening to what we were doing is, I, I, I really believe that we need to look at our charter. And there are a lot of little things that we could amend within that charter. And um, I think that uh, I'm not asking each of you to do that work. I think you could probably have an ad hoc committee that you could get people, someone from the board, and then have people from town get together and talk about what we need to do with our charter. Um, so that's what my public comment is. I'd love to see uh, active community interest in our charter and get ourselves our name. Is it Town Center? Is it Essex Center? Is it just Essex or is it Town of Essex? I don't know, but not TAS, please. Right, thanks, Betsy. Thank you. Um, the other hand that I see right now is Margaret Smith. Margaret, go ahead. Hi, hi, Andy, thanks. Um, I just wanted to, to maybe get some information. The select board, when they have um, appointments or elections or nominations, um, post the letters of interest and they have public interviews. And um, it, it, it seems to me a very transparent process. The school board, on the other hand, um, was very reluctant to release the names of applicants and um, it did not, um, I'm not sure they ever did release the letters of interest and are planning to hold the interviews in, in um, I guess you call it executive session. Um, plus the fact that, that of the people on the committee to select, um, they're not all Essex Town residents, they're Essex Junction. More of them are Essex Junction residents. So I don't know if there's any um, direction you can recommend to um, make um, some changes in, the, in that process so that it becomes more transparent. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Margaret. Um, we don't have any jurisdiction over the school board. We did, uh, we do, ho did, however, have an opportunity to review the candidate materials, and we we called a special meeting uh, toward the latter half of last week, um, and uh, made a motion and approved it to um, 
stating that we didn't have any objections to any of the the candidates, um, and that's essentially our involvement in that. So thank, thank you for your comments, Margaret. Anybody else? Betsy, go ahead. Thank you. Um, I've got the main thing I wanted to say was um, I found the YouTube channel or spot that we have for um, the minutes from the board. I think it's YouTube. Um, but nothing is really there yet. Are we going to post all the, because we're, we're, we're streaming it. I imagine we have a copy. Are we going to put that on there? And is that going to be true for all the minutes that we do? Is it YouTube? Or is it something? Some channel, maybe on Facebook. I, I, I don't know what our posting plan is. Uh, Tammy Getchell is our um, public information officer, assistant to the manager. Um, she's been building up our social media presence to start taking advantage of more of those things. I'm not uh, sure offhand of the timeline of when to do that or how exactly how we'll roll it out, but we are trying to bolster the social media presence to try to get more information out there to our public. Okay, great. Thank you. So, Bessie, are you asking about a specific meeting or just all meetings? No, I think all meetings so that people that couldn't go to the meetings, they have a link there that they could just watch the meeting. You know, I, I think that's, don't we do that? So Town Meeting TV is where that yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah, that's why. Yeah. That's why they're here. Okay. My mistake. I don't, I, I wasn't, I'm not, wasn't trying to. Town Meeting TV. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Betsy. All right. Uh, let's move on. I don't see any other hands. Hands in the room. I don't have my glasses on. I can't see the back of the room. Oh, hi, Allie. <laughs> Uh, all right, let's move on to the first business item, interview and possible appointment of a volunteer to serve on the Conservation and Trails Committee. Um, we have two candidates here tonight. Betsy, come on back up again. Uh, this opportunity to uh, introduce yourself, uh, talk about uh, whatever you want to tell us about uh, either your background or your, your past experience on the committee and why you want to continue. Thank you very much. Um, I, I have to say that I have enjoyed my, I think it's nine months that I've actually been on the on the committee. Um, and um, last time when I came, it was mostly the love I have for the trails and I have for hiking in our woods and enjoying them and wanting to preserve them. Um, and knowing that I'm a problem solver and I bring energy to what I do. And um, since then I was elected the clerk and I take my our minutes and I'm very, very um, quick to get them out there. Um, but I've also in this last nine months attended 21 different webinars presented by um, A&R um, from Vermont Urban Community Forests, from the Audubon, from the Watershed for Vermont, and from Ethan Tapper, who is our community, our our county uh, forester, and um, have made it my mission to know more and have a knowledge base that I can build on for what I'm doing on the water on our uh, trails committee. And um, since being on it, we've made a a lot of really good changes. Um, we've added the next year two people to our committee. Our, we're not a commission yet, but I would love to see us be a commission. And um, I, I feel very positive about the things that I've brought to that committee, to our committee, and would like to continue that because there's a lot more that needs to be done. Thanks, Betsy. Any questions? Any questions from board members? Go ahead, Don. So you've mentioned in the past multiple times that you're interested in interacting with the planning commission. Do you have any plans or ideas on how to have CTC interact with the planning commission? Actually, I, I'm on one of the um, task groups that work groups that, that is assigned now to the planning commission. I'm working on Act 171, which is the um, Act that was passed in 19, 19, in 2016, saying that in our town plan, we have to have a map of our town and we need to show where our forests are, the forest blocks, and show where the um, passage for our um, animals that we share this planet with to make their connectivity so they can move about. So I'm on that one. I'm also on the one for Saxon Hill 
and um, so that we can look at how we're using it and how can we um, make that more. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Brad Tracy. Hi, Tracy. How do you handle situations where your voice is the minority? Um, I tend to listen, and uh, I will always campaign to make them see my side. <laughs> but um, I, I, when I'm not in the uh, majority and my voice has been heard, but it's not in the direction they want to go, that's okay. I, you know, life, life doesn't mean you get everything you want. You know, you have to work with where you are, and compromise is uh, the way democracy works best. So that's what I try to do, and can I even, if it's not all of what I want or anything that I want, can I get a little insert of something I want or not? Thanks, Betsy. Question of Ethan? I just barely got my computer to load. I was waiting to find my notes because I blocked out for a second. But uh, I'll throw one off the, off the top of my head. But uh, um, I've been really interested in... in Jackson Hill and, and Indian Brook recently and finding out more about it. Do uh, you have a vision for those two areas for the town? For Saxon Hill and Indian Brook? Yeah, I do. In Indian Brook, um, I just, we were just working, the team of us from the Trails Committee, the Conservation and Trails Committee, can I call it C&C? Okay. Um, uh, uh, we went out and we were working on getting rid of all of the, we didn't get anywhere near all, but getting the buckthorn out because that's an invasive species and um, the honeysuckle, which we did, we got an awful lot, but we only touched the bare minimum of doing that. Um, that needs to be continued. We, we, it's something that needs to happen over a period of weekends, not just once a year. Um, but the bigger thing for uh, the Indian Brook is that, you know, it's not, easily accessible for people who are um, handicapped. When you get to the lake, or the pond or lake, I don't know how it's pond. Um, so when you get to Indian Brook, uh, it is, um, there's no actual place that's easy for a person who's in a wheelchair to get into the water. And I think a ramp, if we could have a ramp that goes into the water so that they could go in and have their wheelchair going in and then they could float off of that and then we can take the wheelchair out and then it could be brought back in when they're coming out of the water. I think that would be really quite lovely. And I think that we need to look at um, people who bring their dogs to Indian, Par Indian Brook and are not picking up their, their stool so that um, that contributes to the algae blooms that we have during the lake and then it closes it closes Indian Brook on us you know and last year we did have more blooms than I think we've seen and based on the different webinars I've been to climate change is going to make that even more and people really enjoy being in Indian Brook and so I think we need to pay attention to that in Saxon Hill uh, you know there's so much happening in Saxon Hill right now because of the want for development and how that affects the trails and the Fellowship of the Wheel is engaged with that, um, looking at that. But um, we haven't started our work on the Saxon Hill Forest and how to um, make it more attractive to people who aren't on bike. I think a lot of people think it's more of a biking um, trail, but it isn't. There's a lot of really wonderful trails just to walk as well. And I, I just think we need to look at that, and I think we need to look at how that can be connected to Forestdale, because they're close, and you could connect those two, and Forestdale to Matthew Forest, so you have a, a nice network of trails that people can use. Uh, today, I know you didn't ask about Matthew, but today um, there was a team of us that went out and looked at um, Matthew Forest, because there's a lot of erosion, and uh, what can we do about that? And um, some of the areas that you come down are pretty steep, and you come into where there is a little um, stream that's a filler for Alderbrook, and um, there's erosion there, and it makes the the crossing a little bit more iffy and so uh, i'm i'm excited about our our work on that as well thank you okay you're welcome i did find my okay um, written down that i had 
but I, I, it's all about the uh, um, I, and I'm not going to use the right term because I just read off a note, but there was a note in there about the studies of the of the streams. Yes. Um, yeah, I don't know. I haven't looked into how long it's been since it's happened. Um, but you had mentioned that it was important to the water quality and everything else. And I was just wondering uh, if we had a direction or a plan on how we were going to. That came up today when we were walking in Matthew Forest. And Ali said that the state is working on that in conjunction with UVM. They're doing water testing. Um, we would have to hire someone to, if we wanted to have specifics done of our own. But that is happening. Um, one of my friends who had been on the conservation committee when it was a commission, when it was still a commission in 2005, uh, she has the report that they put out about our waters. And I just sent that off today. She sent it to me. And I sent it to Darren to help. Um, give to the whole group because that's one of the things that we're going to be working on this year thank you you're welcome Kendall, any uh, any questions i was actually just a little curious about uh, your vision for connecting the trails i know that you had mentioned that uh, and i was also curious if you folks have uh, done anything that does not use conservation corps for trail building and projects things like that bridges and such Yes, that um, Ali had said today that we have had coordination with them, as well as I was talking to a person who is from Community Justice, and they have young people from our town that um, have to do volunteer hours, and they would be another source of working with, and you know, and give them a sense of community and working in the area might you know help turn them around. I don't know how much turning they need, but I, I think that um, it's a, a really good source. So um, I'm going to follow up on that. Did I answer your question okay? Okay, good. Thank you. Yes, you did. Thank you. Okay. The mute button was stuck. All right, thanks. Um, I'm going to ask a question okay. since water was brought up. And it's one of my one of my I'm favorites. deep trouble, are they now, Alex? <laughs> One of my one of my favorite uh, things to bring up, and when, when Allie is in the room too, is is uh, our entire southern border, at least until July first, is a river, um, and we have really no access to it. Is that part of what the? It's a, we have no access to it. No, there's no there's no uh, there's no canoe launch. Oh well. There's, well, there's there's a couple that uh, aren't very useful. There's there's the one at the top of the dam that the uh, the power company needs, is supposed to maintain. It's almost impossible to actually get to it. And then the other one is if you go down the road where Woodside used to be. Yes. Um, there's three parking spaces there, and then it's a quarter mile hike with your kayak to get to the water. It's a distance. And so it's it's very difficult to use. And so it's just that there's no there's no. Uh, well. I'm not a kayaker, so I wasn't aware of this, but I will I will find out about it because I, um, I think that's really important. I think that um, getting people outside and enjoying the fresh air as well as what our community offers is really wonderful. So yes, I, I'll look into that. All right, thanks. That's okay. A, sorry, it's a plug from my side. Not no, no, I, I, I think there's many people who like to kayak uh, and I, I'm all about it. <laughs> So then, the, then my question is: Then, uh, do you have any questions for us? Or is there anything that uh, you like? You know, anything you want to ask of us? Um, I I guess that one of the things that I that is my one of my charges is around the mapping of our our trails, and um, I think that the community wants this. They they want to know where the trails are, how to get to them, and have a sense of when they get there, oh, <laughs> this is where it goes, and how far is it that we have to go. And uh, Chuck and I, Chuck Vile, uh, uh, and I are going to walk after the 23rd when I get back from Boston um, to look at the trails and start marking them for their uh, depth of slopes that we have and get them all marked so people can do those and have them on the kiosk. There aren't kiosks at every entrance to these woods as well. And at crucial moments when you're like, oh, what did that map say way back in the beginning? Have another map there so they can see where they are and what direction this this fork is going to take them. Um, I, I do think that having our trails mapped and on the 
website for the town is really important. And um, I know that Allie wants the GIS. It's GIS? GIS, not GIF. GIS um, survey done so that it makes it really, there's a lot of clarity to it. We have a simple map that the town has kind of gotten put together, but it's not it's legitimate, but it's just, you know, that. So there's two issues that in one section of our forest in Matthew, when you come down from Tanglewood and going towards the school and it veers and it goes to the school and the next part goes down to um, further around to the school as well as all the way down to um, 289 and then back up Prairie Fields back into um, the school. Um, a portion of that is owned by one of our developers in town and we'd like to get an easement for that and so that we can map it you know legitimately as well as in Matthew there's like a 50 foot section I think it is that that we didn't get into their deed when it first happened this last I think it's maybe four years ago now um, that we didn't get the easement put into that that and you can't see their house from it but it's his land and so get an easement for that as well uh, I think those are important things and I'm wondering if you would support that you can consider it okay <laughs> that's what I, that's what I would ask yeah, I, I hear a lot of requests for uh, wayfinding and, and, and mapping it is so, yeah. I have a plan for when we have the kiosk I found a um, forest scavenger hunt that's for kids fourth grade and lower that they can take it and they can go find these different things and you could have them on a laminated thing so they could get into the woods and yeah. more than just walking but looking about and seeing what they can find make it a really educational experience as well as fun all right okay any other questions okay thank you betsy You're so welcome. we the we are just to, to be clear on our process we're we're interviewing everybody and then i think we're gonna we're, we're uh at, at our final meeting of the fiscal year which is our next one i think we'll be making a lot of uh appointments um, fabulous i hope i get your vote thank you yep. thank, you. thank you so much betsy ben Good evening, select board. Good evening. Do you want me to start? Studying? So, Ken, yes. <laughs> you Ken started me. Morello, thank you for, for stepping forward and uh, being interested in continuing your role in the Conservation and Trails Committee. Um, feel free to introduce yourself, uh, share any information with us that you like about your background, your interest in conservation and trails, and uh, your experience. Thank you. Uh, you record to, that. Whatever you Push a button. Um, let's see, I've been on the committee now for five months, and if you remember from my initial interview in September and then again in January, I said I was going to focus on invasive species, particularly the spongy moth um, infestation, which probably you've heard a little bit about. Mm -hmm. I imagine you would have by now. Um, so what I did is, first thing I did is, and in your packet, you will see um, a fact sheet on the spongy moth, which we didn't have, oddly enough. I put one together for us, and we have that now. We've been on distributing that. I did a lot of public outreach. I visited with about a half a dozen homeowners associations and maybe three or four more individuals around town to try to get them up to speed on what they can do in the current situation. Did that. Um, let's see. What else did we do? Um, so on the committee in those five months, um, I spent a fair amount of time helping with editing the tree policy, which you approved, if you remember. <coughs> um, you have in your packet tonight, I believe, a new um, a rec a suggested change to our mission, which we worked on quite a bit. Um, been to all of the all the meetings in between since I was appointed. Went to the Indian Brook cleanup where we did the buckthorn removal. Uh, went to the Arbor Day celebration over at the uh, Founders School. Did that. Um, I've been helping other committee members as well. Um, work with um, Steve um, on trail mapping. We've tried to come up with a, a sort of a halfway step solving that problem, maybe using some third party mapping and incorporating that into a system which um, could at least give people an idea as to what we have as an inventory. Keep in mind that our committee has some seven different things we're supposed to be studying and inventorying. Historic, archeological, architectural, educational, quite a few different things. So 
I've tried to stay away from the things that we're covering pretty well, which is the recreation and trail sort of stuff, and focused on these other things. I'm trying to get the website up to speed to reflect our mission a little bit, have that inventory available for all seven of those disciplines. That, that's pretty much where I've been focusing. Thanks, Ken. Any questions? Ethan, go ahead. That's where I was going to start because I was very intrigued with the new language in the in the uh, uh, trails policy or the or the or the, the new mission or the the new the mission the mission. Sorry. And um, so my question that you kind of just answered some of, but I want to hear more of was in that mission there are a lot of things like you just said that aren't trails. And there are a lot, yeah. Right. Um, what is the most important to you? I know we can't bring them all up to speed, but what are the the aspects that we are lacking currently um, that you think will be easy, easiest, easiest brought forward going in your, in your direction? Well, we have nine members now, which helps a lot in separating uh, areas of work, certainly. So I'm going to try not to step on anybody else's toes. I'm going to try to focus on the things that, even though they may or may not seem that important, I mean, the invasive species thing didn't seem all that important um, two years ago, but now, you know, some people in parts of town are, you know, quite concerned about the spongy moth infestation. It's, it's actually getting to be a health problem. As you can see, I have a bit of a reaction to the little buggers. And um, so that's um, the kind of thing that I don't want to let get out of hand. I want to make sure that we're on top of these things. There are many other invasive species that we have, plants and animals. And so I want to try to continue to focus on that. I think that a simple list of our historic resources, like the, the museum that we have, um, the Ethan Allen Tower, just having a nice list is, a, is an inventory and study. So I think an inventory of our things is a fairly simple thing we can do and have that available on our website. That would include the trails, of course. Okay. Any other questions? Tracy, go ahead. Talk about a time you changed your mind on the issue. What was the issue and how did the change come about? Good question. Um, you know, I, I didn't think that um, using herbicide or insecticides or more severe controls for the spongy moth was something that should be recommended, but I'm thinking nah, maybe that may be necessary. Did that come about due to your reaction? Um, I've never seen anything quite like what I've seen. It's it's like World War Z. It's it's in some places they're going into people's houses. It's it's amazing. I mean, it really for some people they really feel as though, and I believe them that it's becoming a health hazard. Mm -hmm. The evergreens is what got me. Like they will kill a larch, no problem. Thank you. Uh-oh. Uh, any questions? Yes. I lost it at that. What do you do, Ken, when your voice is in the minority, as Tracy asked? I try very hard to make sure it's not in the minority. I will try hard to debate my my case. And if I continue to be in the minority, I suck it up and we move on. I have two questions. And what are archaeological resources in Essex? Archaeological? Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I don't know. We need to find out. Okay. I assume there might be some um, Native American things, I'm guessing, at the very least. Okay. Thank you. Kendall, any questions? Uh, I was curious what your vision is to go about uh, connecting all the various trails that are in town. Well, it's not something that I've been focusing on, but I think that's a really good idea. My wife was just telling me how she would love to be able to have a trail-wide ride to work. She we on Brigham Hill Road. She drives to um, 117 um, over by um, Emtech, which is where the um, Planet Fitness used to be. And she takes a circuitous route right now, and she's indicated that she would like to see that as well. So um, I think it should be done. Thanks. Um, I'm going to put in another shameless plug here. That that handout that you uh, the spongy moth that you have there it's in your packet. That's uh, is it on our website? It is on the conservation and trails website. Okay, so 
there have been a number of folks who've been commenting about spongy moth on front porch forum and i get all nine forums so i see a lot of questions about it and so what i may start doing is offering folks a link to that let me say this about the spongy moth situation so last year we had an infestation which was bad yeah every egg mass that was left had up to a thousand eggs in it so if just a few of those, say four or five, successfully reach caterpillar stage, that's going to make what we had was bad to worse. Twice as, twice as bad at the very least. So the caterpillars at this point haven't even gotten full grown. But we haven't even begun to see the worst of the defoliation that we're going to see. Last year we had a pretty significant defoliation event, and you saw it in places like Indian Brook. Pinewood was pretty heavily infested. Um, apparently on Pinecrest, um, Royal Park, is that right? Pinecrest? Mm -hmm. Royal Park just got a freaky call email today about how bad it is there. They were bad last year. It's worse this year. And they're very, very concerned. Um, so that was last year. This year, every successful mating will produce another egg mass. And there'll be more egg masses than there were last year. So I suggested this in September. We need to mobilize and do a survey of the town so we can understand where the heavy infestation is before the outbreak next spring. So we can at least, if the state decides to do some spring, or we could actually consider doing something. It's very important to know where to focus. You don't want to have to spray the whole town. That just doesn't make sense. Um, there are fairly benign biological treatments and more severe ones. But if you time it right, with enough lead time, you could go with the bacteria, it's called BTK, which seems to be somewhat effective. That's for forest areas and somewhat wooded semi-urban areas. Um, the next alternative for shade trees that we have that are valuable, like in front of the library, for example, there's a nice, some beautiful oaks there. There is systemic alternatives. So there are a lot of things that we can do, but we need to be ready and know where the problem really is. So, um, yeah, I think I'm, I, I, can, I suggested this to our committee also. Um, I think it was even before I was appointed in January. And, um, you know, it's, it's hard to deal with these things because you, it's not right in front of you at that time. Like right now, yes, let's go do a survey. Because they're all over the place. When there's just little benign egg masses on trees that you can hardly even notice, it doesn't seem like such a problem. But um, don't underestimate this problem. Um, counting on the, the standard natural biological controls I don't think we can. We were all hoping that that would happen. Climate change is making that less probable. We needed a wet spring, really wet spring. Didn't happen two years in a row. So there's a fungus that infects the, um, the young caterpillars. Did not happen this year. All right, thanks. Do you have any questions for us, Ken? Um, let's see, do I have any questions? Um, no, I don't think so. I, I would I would say you have our, our revised um, mission in your packet, and um, I worked on that with the committee, and I, I think it's it's good. And it takes into account the, the tree policy that you passed, which needs to be incorporated, and um, I think that that's really important. Oh, I should say, so, um, you know, Betsy mentioned the business about the recordings. It wasn't the recordings that Channel 17 does that she was referring to. It's all the other committee recordings like the Conservation and Trails Committee, she was asking that those recordings, which do exist, be put onto the YouTube website. That's what it was. Oh. There's a lot of them, actually. Think about it. EDC, Conservation and Trails, yeah. um, quite a few. That's what she meant. Sorry, Betsy. No, that's okay. I, have, I haven't been them for... <laughs> I, just, just wanna, I wanna to this one just I'm done. Thank you very much. Yep, I, thanks. Thanks, John. One of the ANR um, webinars I went to, um, you know, it says uh, the Agency of Natural Resources. Um, it was being led. It was around forests and our pests in the forest. And what Ken put together there was something that they were looking at to make for all of Vermont to use. And when I told him that he was going to the local HOAs, they thought, what is a great idea? And that is now happening throughout the state. People going to the HOAs and doing it all because Ken started that. So I really want to do this one. 
All right, so Ken, we'll, uh, I think if you heard us heard before that we're gonna point everybody- uh, uh, Patiently uh, await your decision. Like at a future, at a future meeting, yeah, yeah, so. All right, uh, so let's move on to the uh, next business item, which is consider changes to conservation and trails committee charter. <laughs> Who do we have for that one? Looks that like one. me. <laughs> um, and then we have a couple members here, so I'm sure they can chime in if I misspeak. But the Conservation Trails Committee has taken a look at its charter, um, as you heard a little bit about already. Um, part of the changes that are proposed, being proposed are just to reflect the change of membership from seven members to nine members. Um, also some changes to capture the uh, the town's tree care policy. Um, part of that is, is having a tree care board. This would identify the Conservation and Trails Committee as that board. Um, those are the main changes, but uh, I guess I would look to the members who are here to, to elaborate if it needs to be. Anything else you want to add? Well, I, 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 I think this is still part of the introduction. If there's anything you want to add to what, to what uh, Greg said. So um, from, I wasn't prepared for this, so um, I'm going by recollection. Um, some of the things that I had requested be changed was the way it was written, it was that the Conservation and Trails Committee maintains the trails. They were, it was very direct what the committee had to do, and I suggested that that be more like, you know, guide and, and develop, but not actually get out there and build the trails. That's the way it was written. So that was the major change I think I, I suggested. And in terms of the membership, I wanted to make sure that every single person in the town, whether they were property owners, renters, homeless people, whatever it was, if they're residents of the town, that they could be considered to be on the, um, that was the other change that I, I wanted. Right, and just having the nine, because you know, we did that, but it hadn't been reflected in our charter. That when we made that change in January, that we could get on, all three of the people, Aaron and Ken and Steve, so that we would have a full slate. The nine has the worked work. out well too. Um, really, it has. hasn't been a problem at all. Um, I think Alan handles the meetings quite nicely. I've tried to get a little bit more parliamentary procedure in place, so it helps a little bit control the chaos. And um, I think it's worked out well. We delegate, which I think is very important with such a wide mission that we have. I think that having nine members, it, it helps seven different disciplines. Nine members, it kind of fits. That's right. <laughs> Thanks. Questions? John, go ahead. So you're going to actually carry out the town free care policy. Is that what you've written into here? Yes. It didn't say that you were actually going to do it. In your... With the help of staff. Right, with the help of staff. And that we were going to get the designation of... Uh, Tree City. Tree City, USA. Okay, because nowhere in here does it say with the help of staff. With the help of staff? Well, really? I thought we had that in there. Um... In the next part down in membership powers and duties, it does mention it, but in to carry out the town's tree care policy, it doesn't. It does. It please, does. Please add that. <clears throat> yeah, please add it because today, while we were out walking in the Matthew Forest, that was one of the things that we had um, Anne from um, Public Works there with us because of the erosion. And a lot of the area that you walk on along these little side streams that contribute to Alderbrook. Um, there's a lot of erosion. And so some of the um, bridges that we have there, as well as some of the trails that we're walking on, are very close to the edge and they could cut, they could fall. So the trails committee, is it, is it Annie's group that would fix the trails where, the, where that erosion is happening? That we were talking about making the trail up higher and coming down? Public Works. Public Works doing that or us? Yeah. What are you asking? Okay. So yeah, Parks yeah. and Rec would do that. Any other questions? Ethan, go ahead. I, I have one just above that. Um, it says to support development and maintenance of multi-use trails, sidewalks, and a greenway system. I'm having a hard time reading through that and a and the fact of a greenway system because the greenway system to me is one system fully connected if it's going to be multiple uh, just reading it i think the wording would make more sense as including greenway including a greenway system or including greenway system if there's going to be this multiple. is your this yeah is your... 
Uh, speaking of the um, multidiscipline and, and, and delegating, this is your area. This is my area. I couldn't read it as and a Greenway system. Just doesn't. And a Greenway system. I would be right that then. Um, well, I'm, hmm. I'm, this isn't my expertise. I just had a, I stumbled right there. I that, was so the goal. I that was the goal it to have goal, a, right? a Greenway system. But. Yeah, it, yeah. I think it was when Darren and Alan were talking about they were they were and a Greenway system. So, um, I I guess what we want is connectivity for people who are trying like to go into Burlington. So you have the path that's coming in from Burlington now that's past the um, Ethan Allen homestead and everything, and it's coming down into to Colchester. Susie Wilson from through Colchester there, and they'll go into the, the city of Essex Junction. So carrying that on out to us so that just like um, Ken was saying about his wife, that be able to get to places using your bike and not needing to use your car or the road or the road because those roads are really i won't ride on them you know because they're just the side when you're on them there's so many gravel i'm just afraid the bike's going to zoop like that and i'm going to be on my and there comes a car <laughs> pancake city so um i really think that having that trail come all the way out is really should be a goal should be a goal. I really would like to actually see a connector with the trains, but I don't. That's not going to happen. At least not this year. Hey, yeah, I just, I, I just thought I'd bring that up. But so is that a, is that a grant? I also don't want to see that that uh, bike path end at Starbucks and be mm -hmm. forgot about because mm -hmm. we only own a couple hundred feet in Essex. So I know. Well, and the the, the other <laughs> we got to focus on the perfect. Well, the other thing that I that I think the Greenway for me is around the Green Belt. So you go into a lot of our neighborhoods, and you've got the Green Belt from the road to the curb, you know, to your sidewalk, is like three feet. There's not a, a tree that can really handle that and have their roots grow well. Um, it should be no less than five feet, really any of those green belts that you have. It's a planning commission As, thing. That's a planning commission thing. And that's one of the things that I'm going to work on from the being on those teams in the planning commission. Uh, we need to really think about that so that the trees can form properly. Mm -hmm. So I'm just trying to get to Ethan's question. Is there, is there a grammar question? Yeah. Just if you words. take out, I think if you put in sidewalks and Take out the A and put in Greenway Systems because it's going to involve systems, more than one trail. Yeah. That's good. That's good. <clears throat> really up. Right. We take say out a Greenway the word system, a. it has to be connected. Both. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That works. That's what I would do, and that makes so up for and, 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 yep. and Greenway Systems. And Greenway Systems. System. Yep. Okay. But that is a biggie because when I think of, I've been through a lot of little towns <laughs> lately. Excuse me. And the arching that they have over the streets that are as big as so that, 15. Different, to, different uh, topic. I'm sorry. Keep okay. The, keep the okay. Flipboard questions. Anybody else have any questions? Yeah, Tracy. I do. Um, the second paragraph from the end, there is an addition. If a member has excessive unexcused absences, excessive is One, three. subjective. Yeah. Um, what would you feel is excessive, missing more than 50%? of meetings um if they didn't have three I, I i would i wouldn't be hesitant i i would say even just three because we all have um remote that you can do you know um and i'm happy we're doing that because otherwise while i'm in boston i i wouldn't be able to attend a lot of this stuff so um do you think three is too too I think 50 harsh? Percentage makes them makes more sense because the number could vary if you start meeting twice a month or something. So that's not a number. Number so is not a good 12. idea. But a percentage makes sense. So I would suggest if we have twelve, Four. fifty percent is a nice. How many meetings do you have a year? We meet monthly, so it's Every twelve. Monthly, so there's twelve. Yeah, fifty percent. I think fifty percent is reasonable. That's too my, much. My, too much. That's too many. So if you miss what twenty five percent, you're out. You do. Four, which is a quarter. A quarter would be a quarter. No, a third. That'd be a third. A third? That seems a lot. Yeah, I do. Awesome. And take notes. <laughs> well, um, I guess. So, so, 
I guess what I would say is I I think, you know, four is a third <clears throat> of the meetings. I think missing a third of the meetings is hard because we do a lot in those meetings. And um, maybe uh, can I bring that to back to the meeting for next week and ask to get, because since we didn't have a number, can we bring that back and get you? I think I think they can they can take care. Oh, okay. So one one thing I wanted to point out is that language is the same language that was in the policy in, in the charter before or the mission before. It just got moved down a couple of paragraphs. That exact same sentence was already in there. It just got changed location. So it's not a new sentence. Just to make that clear. But it it's should not, probably be. Still, but yeah, it's but still it's, a concern. It's, it's still would be nice to tighten it up. Definitely. Ambiguous, yeah. Right. It could be used. Punitively for like, does the select board have um you haven't been doing enough meetings a number why don't we go with whatever the select board has 50 percent oh okay consistency sake i mean that, that's that, that's that essentially that we have it at that, 50 percent but i don't think it's ever been a problem that's uh, i think that's what's in the in the town's charter for the select board if you miss 50 percent of the meetings then you oh is it changing or is it staying well, the, the one, the one, I'm just saying, no, the same, the one in our charter. Does our charter say that? Yeah, it does. About select board members? I'm, I'm no, going to take I your word for it. I don't <laughs> have it memorized. I will yeah. before I sign myself up. Yeah. <laughs> so, I think, I think we probably had to use the same. And then I said 50%, and I was like. Use the same criteria we use for ourselves. 50% seems like a pretty low bar, pretty, pretty reasonable. Mr. Low. Question. Yep. So does this mean they have to take it all back and rewrite it? No, I think we can we can say we approve it as amended if we if we want to, or we can or we could uh, depending on what we want to do. We 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 could also we just have them put it in a reading in the in a, a sent agenda next week or, or next in next meeting or however. If you want to see exactly what the language is before we approve it. But yep. do we have to put it in the consent agenda? So remember, we approved something for like the pre policy and then had to be brought this, back to the, the consent. To this is uh, voted on. So this is not a new policy. We don't consider this a policy, do we? No. So it's policies Mission. that, yeah, you know, policies that we need to, uh, I think it's adopt in one meeting, approve in the next, or. However, the that's also if there's new policies, this is not a totally new right. mission or yeah. either. It's it's um, it's just clarify subjectivity. You know what's as far as policy goes, what's a, what's a significant change that rewards two reviews. I'd say the same thing for this. If if you want to apply that same sort of standard, um, if these are significant enough to bring them back, but I would be comfortable with the. I think you're you're totally within line to make the changes this meeting if you want to. Um, I would like to make a motion. Uh, I would just want to quickly ask Kendall if he has any questions. Kendall, you got any questions? Uh, no, thank you. It looked good to me. Okay, all right. Thanks, Kendall. Do we want to do public comment before the motion, or that's typically what we would do? Yes. Okay. So, uh, any uh, public comment? I don't see any hands in the room. Any hands online? Uh, Patty Davis. Yeah, it sounds wonderful. <laughs> we need this badly in our town. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Patty. Anyone else? See any other hands? I would like to move that the select board of Approve the updated Conservation and Trails Committee Charter with the following changes. The second bullet of the mission, update to read and greenway systems. The third bullet, begin with, in coordination with staff, carry out the town's tree care policy. And updating the second to last paragraph, if a member misses more than 50% of warned meetings, the Conservation and Trails Committee continue with what's presented. Second. All right. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you, Don. Any further discussion? The only question I had was about the first paragraph under membership powers and duties. If there was language that needed to be added there with conversation. 
it's written about received the staff support. And then it goes on to say of the community development department, as well as parks and rec. And we'll change that. That one did. No, that's still we there. just did the bullet. That's still there. Oh, sorry. That was the only other one that mentioned staff support and then listed only three. Um, I would also include in my motion that the membership powers and duties read the committee shall receive staff support as needed on an as needed and as available basis. I will second my your amendment. So doesn't it already say that? It does, but it, it specifically says... lists only three committees. Departments. Or, yeah. Oh, okay. So you want to make it general to all, all and any staff uh, as appropriate, you know, as appropriate. Yep. Okay. Okay. Work. Yeah, perfect. Just one. Right. Up. All right. <clears throat> Thanks, Ethan. Don, you okay with that amendment I, I, to the? I thought I would second the. Okay. Amendment. All yep. right. All right. Any other discussion? Handle any comments? No, oh, I'm good. All right. Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion passes 5 0. Thank you very much. Yep, thank you. Thank you both for your hard work. Thank you. Okay, uh, moving on to agenda item 5C consider approval of human services funding recommendations for FY22. Who's got this one? I believe I saw Tammy. Yep, there. there she is. She's here somewhere. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Good. Um, so, hello. Good evening, everybody. Um, I am here to present the fiscal year 22 um, recommendations from our review committee. Um, most of the facts are there in front of you in the memo that's in your packet, but I'll just go over a few of the highlights. Um, the, as you know, we approved the budget um, last year, was approved by, the, by the, um, the town voters on March 2nd to approve a budget of $159,261. And we received applications up until February 15th. And we received 34 applications totaling $300,857 um, in requests, which is $58,992 more than last year. Um, and we have had a significant growth uh, both in requests and the dollar amounts that are being requested. Um, I think part of that could be maybe because of COVID, it's also an increased effort um, for outreach that we've been doing. So um, since we are above and beyond what we have for the budget, we um, did have the tough job of having to pare down um, the requests and we, the committee is recommending partially funding 28 of the highest scoring requests. Um, some of the highlights in how they got to that point, um, they, one of the things they did this year was they increased the scoring range from one to five to go to, to one to 10, which gave us a little bit of um, wiggle room as far as like being able to differentiate our scores a little bit better. Um, and I think everybody um, was a fan of that this year after we processed everything. The scores, um, the second thing we did, we, we weighted the scores based on a formula on how well the applicants scored. So basically the higher they scored, the higher of percentage um, that, of the, their request that, they, that we are recommending. Um, if you look at attachment A in your packet, um, the formula breakdown by step is, um, in there, and as well as the recommended funding levels, which are in the green column. Um, let me see. I guess that's, that's basically the recommendations from the committee. Um, some of the other things I would point to is that the, um, the current guidelines allow organizations to submit applications by the program. That was something that our review team in the past had decided that we would allow 
um, simply because sometimes there are large organizations that do have multiple programs and each of those programs could benefit Essex residents. Um, however, due to the volume of requests and the amount that's being asked, the review team, um, we had one applicant that, that organization that submitted three applications. Um, and so the review team started with that one, decided that they would review it as one application and scored it as one application recommendations. Um, this way it doesn't eliminate the organization from receiving anything, um, but it certainly will allow the team to be able to provide recommendations that would spread that um, those dollars, those funding dollars through to other um, organizations as well. Um, and also, I think the recommendation from our team is that we would eliminate that our future guidelines um, so that organizations would only be able to submit one um, application. The review team also um, is recommending to um, request a one page report from the organizations receiving their funding awards. Um, and then the review team would look at these um, one page reports. They could also be submitted into the packets and to, so that the select board can see how some of these funding requests have been spent. Um, sometimes the organizations just send those to us. Um, the review team is um, looking to see if possibly we could or should um, request that they do that, that they actually, once we award that, that we they would be required to submit something before December 31st of each year. Um, that, that again is a recommendation. Um, and finally, regarding the focus areas, typically we make recommendations for funding at this meeting, and we also make recommendations for the focus areas for the next year. Um, however, I've, I've done a little bit of research on that, and uh, one of the tools, the resources that we use for that is the um, community health needs assessment that UVM puts out every two years. And I've contacted them. They were they are supposed to be releasing that this summer. So the suggestion would be from our team that we hold off on making a recommendation on focus areas until we've had a chance to review that um, needs assessment when it comes out, um, and then possibly come back to the board this fall with some recommendations for the focus areas. Um, one other note I would make on the focus areas is that we did not score by focus area this year, which was different. Um, and that was primarily because some of the organizations kind of fell into more than one of the focus area groups and didn't really know how to submit their application. Um, you know, they, they may have fit very well into a couple of them. So for the scoring, we, we leave the focus areas in place, but then we score based on how well the application fit within any of the focus areas. And um, that way they don't have to narrow that down into one particular place. Um, and they can apply and, and describe their program to the fullest extent that way. Um, the last bit of my presentation would be attachment B, which is a copy of the human services distribution policy, which was adopted in November 18th, uh, um, 2019. It formalized the former one sentence policy and made this um, into something a little bit better for us. The items in red basically are a lot of things from changing wording from unified manager to town manager. Um, and there's a couple of other minor edits in there that um, we are making as a recommendation. So I know the select board typically does a review at one meeting and then we'll put it on to the next meeting for consideration. So um, including it um, as part of this item for your review. Um, and we can put that on to the next meeting for approval um, and any edits and suggestions you may have. So um, I'm open to any conversation and discussion and questions you might have about all of that. All right, thanks, Tammy. Any uh, board member questions, Tracy? Uh, thank you, Tammy. Uh, last year we approved one contingent upon the organization obtaining 501c3 status. Um, have all of the applicants met that criteria that's in policy or the IRS 990 
criteria? Um, I say yes, but I also double check that before I actually cut a check. So it will be double checked <laughs> to make sure that our finance department also has the most recent. So. Perfect. Thank you. So, Tammy, I didn't think uh, Heavenly Pantry had a 501c3. Oh, okay. Well, I'll have to look. I'm sorry. In their application, I see. It says he did. So, they do have one now? They have not in the past. Same. That was in their application. <laughs> okay. I don't have that at my fingertips. I can try if the, the problem is, is if I look that up, my, my, um, internet is going to freeze. You're going to lose me because I'll be looking at, <laughs> but I can take a note. Let me. So, uh, yeah. So as, as long as, as long as we have that requirement that before, um, before we cut a check, we verify that there's 501 C3 then. Okay. Cause I know yeah. in, in the past it, it's, it's been a, a touchy question with Heavenly Pantry and what we how we got around that the last time they asked for money was we we sent the money to the Vermont Food Bank and put it in and they put it in an account that uh, uh, Heavenly Pantry could draw on so that there was there was no good girl Patty can you go on mute please Patty Davis please mute yourself that um, we we. Right, we sent the check to the food bank so that it wasn't going to a organization that didn't have a 51C3. But if they've gotten a 51C3 since the last time they applied, then um, that's a different. All I can say is what I read in the application. Right, 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 right. I understand that they are a tax exempt organization because of their re, re, um, mm -hmm. their religious organization. They, right. if they, they, we need to, do need to verify that they have a 51C3. You know concern in the past i don't have a question but i would truly <laughs> as this is my first year sitting on this committee <laughs> like to thank tammy for the awesome job and the many hours she spent on this mm -hmm. and to also thank travis for the amazing formula he came up that once he did the formula then things started to really click and we could do more with, with the information so mm -hmm. i truly appreciate both of them and their hard work I will be sure to let them know, and they thank are you. invaluable. <laughs> yes, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, John. Evan, go ahead. Ethan, sorry. Okay, I'm used to it. <laughs> My question is, and I, I don't know all of these organizations. Is this all of the organizations that work with Essex, not necessarily within Essex? How does that work? Are all these organizations in Essex? They're, they're based out of multiple different. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, as far as like where they're based from, not all of them are necessarily located in Essex, but one of the scoring components that we have, because they could be regional. Um, you know, some of them are some, you know, agencies that serve a region. But one of the scoring components um, and one of the questions asked on the application is how many Essex residents have you served in the past year? How many Essex residents do you anticipate serving in the next 12 months? Um, and we score that. So if they come back and they say, you know, we've served three residents and that happens. And sometimes they say, we didn't serve any, but we think we might serve five. You know, they could get a lower score than say an organization that can show that they have serviced and assisted um, 500 Essex residents. So, um, but it's part of a scoring component because there are agencies where a reasonable number of like, you know, three could be a reasonable number given the type of service that they may be like, like um, habitat or the, uh, which is what was the one I want to think of here, the housing one, the one that builds houses. Um, you got it. Okay. Habitat, yeah. habitat for humanity. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> that one. I mean, they're obviously not going to build 500 houses and serve 500 Essex residents. So sometimes, you know, it, it's all in context of the entire application. 
Right, Ethan. I have more questions. Yep. So that leads me to my next question because I, I again, I don't have a, a big background on this, but is is sleep in heavenly peace within our area or serving any of our, our community members asking for $25,000? Um, I don't think we recommended um, any award for them. Yeah, no, I see that. I just, yeah. they make bets and they travel them, all over the man. country. Okay, awesome. I would have to look at their individual application to know like the specific answers for for what you're saying, like how many did they actually serve? I, I'm not. Yeah, I was just curious if they were, if they were, I would, I would answer my question about them being a, a national company. Well, yeah. Company. So that's awesome that we have you guys to, to do this because uh, not all of us know what uh what we have here in the community for for these services yeah. so that's very good they, they have in the pack in the past where they yeah in the past we've gotten the entire packet and yeah. it's it's a I two like inches thick yeah <laughs> <laughs> if you print the whole i just thing had out. a couple questions yeah. i was like man i just wanted to know why Aunt dots wasn't asking for more money too because they they do so much for this community and they have the highest score because they do the most <laughs> so i was like so next year. yeah it's it is a tedious job there are um approximately seven pages per application that's actually really um much better than we have had in the past and but you know multiply that by 30 some odd applications it's a it's a very it's a huge review practice so um as dawn mentioned you know there's some there's some thanking to go around there's a lot of thanking to go to the entire committee which you know, has to spend a lot of time going over these applications. And yeah, the goal is to save a little bit of time for all of you folks. Any other questions? Kendall, any questions? Well, at the risk of going home to a locked door, because my wife told me to leave this alone, she's actually very, very proud of the way Essex is set up with its 1%. And I got to agree, you guys do an excellent job. You've got a great criteria and everything. So kudos to all. But I will ask, because um, I've participated in this a little bit in another town, is that I assume that the criteria takes into account the fact that some of the smaller requests um, that you get, it's really a larger portion of their budget to help folks than some of the big ones that are in there where the 1% the that they get from Essex is a small part of their budget, but the request from Essex might be a huge part of another organization. I assume you've got some criteria that takes care of that. that and that's my only comment. Thank you. Um, I will respond to that and tell you, I think that's a great comment. Um, it's actually, um, so I'm glad you took the time the, to go ahead and say something. Um, it, it is a it is a piece to this that our that our review team struggles with in trying to uh, determine if, if what a an organization is asking for is makes sense if it makes sense for them to be asking for twenty five thousand dollars or um, you know compared to the one that is scoring higher and they're asking for $4,000. <laughs> um, and so the weighted formula that we have really doesn't take that into consideration, but we've had a lot of conversations about that. And I, I would like to think that this is still a goal for this committee to be able to um, come up with something that is, everybody really did like the idea of the formula. And as Dawn said, you know, Travis came in just, being an Excel whiz and put this formula out there. And we all were just like, he just created a magic trick. It was the best thing ever. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I think part of one of the things, the appealing part of that is, is that um, with, with, you know, the changes that we are looking at with committees that, you know, in the future, maybe we would look at having other like maybe a member of the school board or maybe other a community member or some other people sit on this committee to do reviewing and maybe do a better you know job at ro rotating um and if we had a formula in place that's gonna allow us to do that um a little bit easier than what we're doing right now so 
I would say this is still a work in progress. And we still are trying to come up with better ways to um, score in the fairest way. Um, it is far better than what it was. And I think it does outshine what some other municipalities are doing as far as just arbitrarily just here's, here's a, you know, here's what we're going to give you, um, you know, because it is a donation from the town. It's not actually a grant. It's, it is a donation. It's something that the taxpayers um, are paying for that go to help fund these nonprofits. But there, it's not necessarily a grant. We've just really formalized it. We're just, I, th I would like to say we're ahead of the game. <laughs> but it isn't perfect. So I, I, I appreciate your comment, Kendall, for sure. And um, we are working on that to maybe make that a little bit better. And Tammy, we do make it clear to the recipients to, to not count on getting a grant every year, right? So they, sh you know, if if, a, if getting money from the town of Essex is vital to their survival, they need to consider their overall funding plan and not rely totally just specifically on the town of Essex. Yes, I think it's it's an actual question. Um, that if they were not to receive this funding, how would that affect their programming? I think that's an actual question on the application. And it is also mentioned in the guidelines as well that, you know, this is not, there is no guarantee for this. Um, and it is not supposed to be that backbone of their, of their organization. So, yes. But Tammy, one thing I wanted to bring up, you mentioned uh, a report asking for the organizations to provide a report. Um, in the past, we have uh, made efforts to ensure that any funds that we give are um, unconditional um, in that we don't put any re restrictions on how they get used by the organizations, um, largely because should an auditor ask us how the money was spent, we can simply say it was given to this organization and that's the end of our discussion. But if we give it to an organization with an expectation that they're going to spend it a specific way, we may need to prove that they spent it that way. And it's very difficult to get outside organizations to provide documentation that's legally acceptable to an auditor. It may be difficult to do that. So that's why I'm, I'm a little concerned about requiring or asking for a report like that um, and whether it exposes us to an audit risk. I think it's really valid. Um, I personally, I grumble about it um, on my own level just because um, it is an extra step that we're doing and it does make it feel a little more like a grant. And we're not, we are not a grant um, agency. This is not what we're doing. We're not even a human services agency. We are just, we just simply have funding available. Just like many municipalities, we just have, have tried to come up with a way that makes it fair for distribution. Um, and I would totally, if, if the board wanted to make a recommendation not to do that, um, you know, that's the board's decision to do that we would certainly you know that can be changed so. so so tammy that's just a practice that's not documented anywhere that they or is it part of the application that they have to do they have to expect to provide feedback where, where do we um or is it in I, I, i'm gonna i think it might be mentioned in the guidelines um but the guidelines are guidelines um yeah. just guidelines they're just guidelines. Yeah, no, uh, let me see. I'm looking that up quickly here. If I, if I, hopefully I'm not freezing on you. you know, I think it was my suggestion that we can't do this. My reasoning was we are giving out a tremendous amount of money to a lot of these organizations and never hearing from them. They are asking us for money to help the residents of Essex, but we never hear of the money that we've granted or given to them was actually used to benefit residents. Yeah, so the, the, the problem, like I said, with that is then you, you put workload on staff to go collect that feedback. And also we could be, as I said, we could be required by an audit since we're putting stipulations on the funds to, to 
pursue it, you know, in a way that is probably pretty resource intensive. I'm trying to think if there's a way to ask for, you know, not how the money will be spent, but how how will work be done in Essex and how will the people of Essex be served, um, right. which may be captured already in some of their materials, but is it a one page? But some of it wasn't, paragraph? and that was yeah. my concern, is it? Because there's three or four groups here that have gotten large amounts of money that we never heard from, mm -hmm. what they, you know. And my concern is that, I mean, these are our taxpayers' dollars. We're trying to help the people of Essex. I, I need to find a way to make sure they're helping the people of Essex. And, and what if, so when she mails the check, what if there was a note that went in it that said, we would love to hear how these dollars were used or something? I mean, you're leaving it optional, but you're not actually requiring them to, I just, no, I, 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 just, I don't think it's a question that has to be answered tonight. I think it's good feedback. Um, Tammy's here, which is great, so she can she can hear that. And I think it could be a work in progress of what the best way to hear back or hear from some of these agencies is or are without necessarily putting the town at risk um, for, for staff time, for audit um, concerns, anything like that. I can um, make a quick... Uh, in our guidelines, I can read to you what we ask them to do. Um, cause I found it. Um, award recipients are asked to provide a summary of the project work completed and the services provided to Essex residents as a result of receiving human services funding. Summary reports should be received no later than December 31st or six months after receipt of funds, whichever is later. Award recipients who have not provided a summary report will not be eligible to apply for funding in the next cycle or until a final report is received by the town. It limits them the, uh, the reports to one page and they can submit it by email or in person. So I think the, I think the wording to that um, if we do it this way is not basically the only way that they wouldn't be eligible is if they don't submit anything. They're not being judged by what they put in the report, but we are asking them to provide us with something um, that says, hey, this is what we've done. That's what's in the guidelines. I might suggest that that guidance be uh, um, that, that that one page that you get weigh pretty heavily on the next year's selection only because as as don says the reason i asked my question was that you can look at some of these like ant dots and i don't think there's an essex resident that doesn't know how much they do but uh, some of the other ones you might look at and say well is what do they do for the money that we give them so that's all i just i just think staff you need to look at whether this is putting you in a mm -hmm. good position to uh, it's problematic resource wise or audit wise or you know I, I completely agree I mean we used to have the, the VNA come in every year and, and explain to us why why because they used to get a huge huge portion of the large percentage much much more than they're getting now um, they would come and explain to us why we can invite anybody to come to. So, but anyway, yeah. Thanks. All right. That's not the actually the 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 uh, the request here is for us to approve the funding, not to talk about the policy. But uh, two, two plus one for each. Mm -hmm. Consider approval of and Fridges funding recommendations. So this is on the agenda. Oh, a bunch of changes in the there are two well, recommendations like in the memo about um about, ah, those, about in the memo it's not on the agenda yeah. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> i read it yep 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 i probably i did too but uh, I, I run the meeting by the agenda <laughs> <laughs> okay so uh, any other questions about the funding and then we can talk about the policy Do we want to go to public comment about funding and then first? Yep. 
Okay, so, uh, Etsy, I saw your hand first, so come on up. Tammy, it all sounds so good. My name is Betsy Tan, I'm sorry. Um, uh, my question is about, like, when you brought up Habitat for Humanity, um, do you get a higher weight on them if they, when they're working with our CTE, that they have the students who are working in the houses, and do they do we find that the students are actively involved in the building and learning how to read the architectural drawings and the working drawings so that they can um, work with those people and come out as a, ready for an apprenticeship when they leave the high school? Um. That was a really complicated question because <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> it's a good question. No, it's a wonderful question. Um, but what what it is um, as far as like in the scoring, um, I guess what I'm I, what I guess what I'm getting at is that all of those details would have to be in their application, and then all of the reviewers, five or six of them, have can score between one and ten on. We have one, two, three, four, five, six different components that we score them on. So say for instance, they have all of those details that you're just explaining. They can score between one and 10 on program fit with one or all of the focus areas. Benefit to Essex residents, the need outcomes, number of people served, the ease of eligibility and access for Essex residents. Mm -hmm. Essex residents will be well informed about the program available. Culturally responsive services to BIPOC, LGBTQ, and underserved, um, underserved, 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 um, and demonstrated need for funding. So those are the six components that we score on. I see. Okay. So, so yeah. yeah. So like everything you're asking, yeah. I wouldn't necessarily have a, you know, support for. It would be coming from the team. Okay. Thank you very much. In the room. Hey, Patty Davis. A Andy, um, I'm sorry. This is for you. Um, I was muted. And I had my husband come in because I I get up I get upset when something goes haywire on my laptop here and my PC and I and and I was muted so I just want to make sure um, I'm going to mute myself again. Can you please tell me when I mute myself that I'm muted? Okay, you're muted now. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, Patty. Uh, Travis Poulin. Hi, this is Travis Poulin. I work at Chittenden Community Action, a program of CVOEO, the Champlain Valley Office of Economic Opportunity. And I just wanted to thank the select board. You are so thoughtful about all of the work that goes into it. And I well know that it is a lot of work that goes into it as an agency that has been the recipient of your um, of your support. I just wanted to, to thank the select board. And um, as a recipient, I'll give you any kind of data that you want. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thanks, Travis. And thanks so much for attending. Okay, any other comments? I don't see any other hands. None in the room. Okay, so um, How do we want to proceed? Do we want to approve the uh, funding and then go on to talking about the policy? Tracy. Uh, I will move that the select board approve contributions to the human services agencies as presented, contingent upon receipt of proof of 501c3 or IRS 990 status. Okay. Thank you, Tracy. You second second ethan thank you for, for the second any further discussion all those in favor please say aye aye aye, aye. opposed okay motion passes five zero now let's talk about the policy i make the motion that the select board review the recommended amendments to the town of essex so we should have uh discussion first i definitely want to have a discussion i might want to make some comments on it and the public might want to as well 
Okay. Before we make a motion. Actually, I did a motion before. We have a question. Go ahead. Oh. Okay. So we, yeah, we, the, the select board is typically, yeah, the select board is typically talk about, yeah, move to an agenda. Talk about we have a motion that we don't tell public to speak during the motion. Yeah. I guess we do it in a different way. Um, do we need a motion to discuss this since it's not on the agenda or no? It's on the agenda. Under, and it's part of the recommendations. So oh, I would read it. So you're fine to discuss it. Oh, okay. The human service funding recommendations. So it's one of the recommendations that we change the policy. Yes. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So anything? Let's see. The the policy, as you said, there's a couple. Just there's a few changes in there, and there's that one uh, new sentence added. Anybody have any comments or concerns about what's in here? Board members want to make any comments. Ethan, is it again? Um, I might have done it once. The only question that I had, and, and I could be not reading this correctly, but under item four, applications and guidelines, I believe Tammy was reading from the guidelines. Um, it says Town of Essex, Vermont Human Service Distribution Policy. Is that what you were reading? Um, no, actually, what I was reading was the, the were the guidelines. And the policy itself and it used to be just one sentence that was made, I think, at a town meeting. And um, so we kind of brushed it up a little bit to have to include a timeline and um, basically a process. But the guidelines change each year. So as opposed to taking this policy and having it amended every single year, the guidelines um, change based on a different approval for different focus areas, possibly, or um, it could be a pandemic <laughs> could urge us to change the guidelines and how people apply. Um, so, or even a way that we process if we've changed our application, um, we didn't want to have to change the, the policy each time. So there are, there is a policy and there are guidelines. Um, also, Ethan, they're all found on the website which is um, sxdt.org slash human services. And the, the I just, I wanna give you a little history here about this is that this, this, has, uh, this process has always been viewed as the, man the manager's process. So the manager owns the guidelines, the select board doesn't. So we've never approved the guidelines. We don't review them or approve them. We set this policy, which allows the manager to, to um, Handle the guidelines, um, just to just to, to to clarify that. And so, and it's also the manager's committee. The manager appoints the people that are participate in the committee. They're not appointed by the select board. Just 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 some yeah. background. But go ahead with your question. Sorry. Well, why I had asked was because I I, one, I didn't see any guidelines, and then in the next, it's there's a sentence, and then there's a paragraph that starts. I used to read the unified. It says now the town manager will revise and update the application and supporting guidelines in accordance to this policy. And then it says, and with focus areas approved by the select board when necessary. I guess the clarification that I was asking for was those focus areas being approved by the select board and then the when necessary. Where is that? So, um... Maybe I shouldn't jump in. I defer to you, Tammy. You want me to jump to answer this? You, you have a, I know Andy, you have a great handle on this because you were part of the committee that worked on a lot of this build. So, so, so Tammy had mentioned earlier that there's a, the uh, UVM uh, Medical Center or whatever it's called now, the hospital uh, is required to do a uh, community needs assessment periodically. And there's a new assessment coming out this summer. And so there's, there's, there's five categories and, and yeah, they're not listed here that we approved last year. And Tammy and the committee is recommending that the select that they, that we allow them to review the contents of that community needs assessment and then consider whether or not changes need to be made to those focus areas and then bring that recommendation to the select board after the that documents available 
and then, then we then we would approve it if if if, if any changes are recommended. Yep. yep. Just one more comment to that. Um, this piece is a little bit new in the past two or three years. I want to say that the select board approves the focus areas, and um, practice for the since it's been in place has been that the select board approves them each year at the same time you do the focus as the um, the funding distribution. So just it's not happening this year because of what Tammy and Andy explained. So it'll happen in the future, but it, as long as those uh, the regional planning commission puts out information that we've used in the past, so depending on the resources that are available, it does come to the select board each year. It's just a matter of timing. That answers my question. Holt I, I, is asking. Yep, I could also mention, I'm sorry if I'm talking on top of you. I can't, I can't tell. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I, we also outreach to the school and I've already done that. Um, I, I have um, contacted Brian and uh, Donahue and Aaron McGuire to ask about needs that they may recognize. It's, it's, it's it, 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 there is no like, like rule that we use. It's just kind of, you know, it's to give us resources to see if there is, there are certain specific needs that, that could be trending in a different direction that we don't quite understand. And these reports and that outreach helps us to understand that a little bit better. And we may want to make a recommendation to adjust a focus area, say based on a, a pandemic year or based on something else um, that could be coming in so all right any other i just got one clear yep. again sorry go ahead this budget this year was there any focus areas that were changed or approved for this budget that we're working on improving so last year uh i believe the equity category was added. Sounds right. And so that was the the only, I think the only. That was two years. It was two years ago? Two years, yeah. We've, been, we've had, um, so I can read them off to you. Um, we have the, the areas that we had before to start this was access to health and behavioral health affordable housing or housing assistance, child or family support for healthy relationships, and emergency food and disaster relief. And then not this year, but the year before in the round, I'm talking about fiscal year, we added diversity, equity, and inclusion, um, which provided support for initiatives to build diversity, equity, and inclusion into a program um, or to actually support a program that that provides those services. Um, so we actually have one, two, three, four, five different focus areas right now. And based on whatever feedback we received from the school, from um, the police, from, I mean, we, we have several different areas, but primarily UVM um, needs assessment as a big part of that we may want to make adjustments to some of those focus areas, yeah. eliminate, add, change the wording, that sort of thing. Anybody else? I've got one. Um, my concern is the the added sentence in under eligibility about uh, religious organizations. Um, we've had a lot of discussion about this in the past. I know it's a new select board, so um, I have a lot of concern with opening this up to non five hundred one c threes. Giving my um that's still in the sentence above so this doesn't this doesn't eliminate that no it's still it, um like in numbers like just above that sentence yep. only those that are nonprofit organizations who are considered a 501c3 um or that file the form 990 are eligible okay I mean, we could we could maybe add it, emphasize it in that sentence, or reword this in a way to make sure that that is still tied together. 
Yeah, because it's in its own paragraph, I thought it might imply that it is a an alternate way to be eligible. And so I guess if we can, and so I, and I understand that we're not approved. Where are we? Yeah, we are. Are we approving this tonight? You could. You can. You're ready it's to up to you. Yes. Okay. <laughs> right, because we're not, yeah. Okay, so as I, I think as long as it's clear that you still have to have a 501c3, then I'm fine with it. Um, and I agree that, yeah, the, the programmer service needs to be um, um, non-religious based or non, not uh, need to be secular or whatever the right word is there. Um, so Andy, if we were to just make that as a last sentence in the paragraph, uh, rather than its own. Um, I'd, that, be more, I'd be more comfortable with that because I don't want it to, I don't want it to appear, uh, you know, like, as I said, I, when I read it, I thought it was a second, an alternate way to be right. eligible. Yeah. I might suggest you place it in the middle of that paragraph right after reply. Yeah. Make it the second sentence. What you're saying too? No. So it's included in the next yep. stipulation. Yep. Okay. Make it. That works for me. Make it the second sentence. And to make it second clear, sentence. instead of the third sentence, only those that are nonprofit. I would say only nonprofit organizations who are considered a 501c3. Yada yada yada. Just to make it very clear. That the those isn't up for debate. It's everybody. So you're 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 saying remove the three words those that are. Yes. And say only nonprofit organizations who are considered a five one c three. Correct. I agree. Just a couple of nods. All right. Thank you for that clarification, Tammy. That helps a lot. Um, anybody else? Uh, let me go back to the meeting. Any any public comment on the policy? See any hands in the room? Don't see any hands up online. So, Ethan. Make a motion that the select board approve uh, the policy for the human services distribution uh, as amended. That clear enough. This one. I'm I'm good, Tammy. Are you okay with that? Is that clear enough for you, Tammy? Yes. Yes, absolutely. I made the changes while you were speaking. Okay. Second. Okay, hey, thank you, Ethan. Thank you, Tracy. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. A okay, motion passes five zero. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. All right. So hi Allie. Finally getting to you. Okay. Uh business item five B presentation of Essex Parks and Rec program fund budget. Come up, Allie. Hi. Um, so every year the program budget, the enterprise fund, uh, is presented to the select board. Um, just as a reminder, this fund is not taxpayer based, so it's not affecting um, anything that's already approved. But just going through and, you know, things have shifted and changed a little bit and we're kind of diving deeper into our larger programs uh, for budgeting purposes. But this is what we propose for the upcoming 2023 budget uh, in regards to our programming. Um, when it's not aquatic or park-based, uh, 
those seasonal staff members we have are out of this combined budget, which is with um, the extended school program. Um, and then this budget did in the past um, support a 60% employee. I can't really say FTE because 60% <laughs> employee. Um, and that's shifting a little bit as we have shifted from merger and co-location um, aspects into back on our own and staffing shortages. So um, I don't know if anyone has specific questions on the revenues or expenses side of it. Uh, we're basically in a rebuilding year in hopes to get our extended school programming back um, into the lineup. We did put that on pause as of January of this year uh, due to staffing and um, also with some summer camp offerings, which will end up kind of being floating on both fiscal years. Uh, just increasing that as we rebuild over the next year. All right. Thanks, Allie. Any questions? Tracy, go ahead. Um, so I looked at the budget multi-year forecast graph, oh. um, and it looks like the revenues for 2023, the expectation is roughly $200,000 in revenue. Um, for the expenditure, I'm estimating that at 375, um, just based on where that graph falls. Um, so, if revenue is making up roughly 53% of expenditures, where do the rest of those expenditures get paid from? Well, we um, I haven't seen that fun fancy graph um and i'm a total visual learner when it comes to that so okay cost center cost center summary for the um epr programs i don't have that oh that's okay Oh, this fun one. Okay, can I refocus again? Yeah. Can you ask me again, Tracy? Um, Sorry. <laughs> so based on this, it looks like revenues are expected to be roughly two hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars. With the expenditures, it looks like roughly three hundred seventy-five thousand, which means that the revenues are only covering um, call it fifty-three percent mm -hmm. of your expenditure. So, wondering where that other 47% of expenditures gets paid from. Well, a lot of this is based on, you know, minimums we set and what gets paid out for instructors on that. Um, ideally, as we go, this pot of money, you know, carries over every year and can support that. Um, sorry. Courtney has her hand up. Oh, Courtney has her hand up. Great. Let's go to the finance director. Courtney, She's these, Hi. But I don't. <laughs> so um, I think that multi-budget year forecast graph is grabbing more expenditures instead of just the single year of the uh, fiscal year 2023. So some of the projections go out for expenditures. We're not presenting tonight more than just the um, FY23 numbers. So I wouldn't look at, refer to that graph in this um, <clears throat> budget presentation. I would just go to the um, actual numbers from the detail and the account lines. So um, for her, um, sorry, the AP program uh, costing center 159-30-14. It does have, have the 200,000 for revenues coming in, but total expenditures are actually 162,179. 
Okay. So she. Sorry. Um, I mean that. That's why it caught me off guard because I was like, well, when we went over this, it was all good, <laughs> and I was not seeing this fun fancy graph and picture. So yes, I didn't know how to answer that completely. Well, that yeah. Makes so ex expenditures are projected out further, but they're not captured in in revenues. The revenues weren't projected. Thanks, Courtney. Sorry for the mini. <laughs> I was like, oh shoot. <laughs> All right, uh, Kendall, I see your hand up too. Just had a couple, three, three, three questions. Um, I know the salary's up, and you mentioned that you can only get part timers now versus the full time. That's why those are up. So, uh, the other question I had was the both in ski and soccer. This is the first year you guys are doing that. And the third question I had was I noticed that your, your credit card processing fees, I'm always looking at those. Is there any way that you can? increase or get 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 that back or charge the folks for those so that you don't have to cover those just a question thank you um salary one was the first question and then i got distracted with the bolton one this is your first year what's that you must next your first year doing both oh i know the bolton one it was the salary with the increase so we actually dropped the the salary for the regular salaries um because it bumped down to part-time because that position if we were to re-advertise right now would only be a part-time salary based on the program needs that we have um so those are wrapped in you know, if we had someone year round who's part time along with the seasonals like extended school program and summer camp, um, you know, those are down because we're not having a day camp this summer, uh, which we have done. The last time we did it was COVID summer 2020. But the real the real feel of what that looks like is from 2019. Um, Bolton, so what we did is we broke out um, the Bolton Ski and Ride program, soccer, and then, you know, we've had boys and girls lacrosse listed on there. Um, but we've done Bolton for probably 30 years at this point. It's just always those Bolton and soccer have always been wrapped up into other um, miscellaneous revenue. And so it just kind of gets lost in the shuffle to when it's such a large program to our, um, you know, preschool music classes and seated yoga classes, um, when we're taking, you know, 100 kids up to the mountain, it's just a really different one that we want to make sure that we're pricing correctly based on the expenses um, for the program. And then um, the credit card fees that's something we're definitely looking into um there are a couple options but basically that a couple years ago that was a new line item added in that was never really separated out to see how the convenience of the credit card purchases for transactions is really affecting um our overall budget it was wrapped into um expenses and we couldn't really pinpoint it. So um, when we were co-located with EJRP, we did a cost recovery program. Um, since that ended a year ago, you know, there are some things that have gotten in the way for us to really dive back into pricing and programming, pricing our programs. So basically we're looking into that, you know, there's the question of, well, if someone were to pay you know, here in the office with a check or cash, should they be charged that fee? Um, the majority of our, our transactions are online, over the phone, um, and a lot of in-person uh, credit card. So, on the list, just, Kendall. Yeah, 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 it's just, yeah. I just thought I'd mention that. Yep, credit no, card. I, yep. Thank you. I appreciate it. And just so you know, the credit card processing is split out between, you know, programs versus 
other purchases that do come in but affect operating costs. So it's an overall project that we need to dive into. All right, any other questions? Okay, any questions from the public? Any hands in the room? Or do we have to see a hand in the room? Oh, okay. Um, Leave it. Don't touch it. Don't touch okay, it. sorry. Oh my gosh. It's like my first in person meeting in years. Close, Scott, let me know. <laughs> um, I looked at that pro at, the, at this um component of the packet, and I was just wondering if the senior center expenses and revenue are just totally separate, or should that have been in there? I'm just looking for it. Didn't see it. Uh, so that that program fund, the enterprise fund, is actually in the village budget approval portion of the calendar year of the budget year so that's already been presented and approved and it's done on the village side and is not incorporated the senior center budget is not incorporated in this fund got it senior bus and the staff and all that that's an senior bus is operating budget. Um, and the staff is operating. What happens at the senior center at Two Lincoln is its own budget. If there are other fifty-five plus programming that are done, it's with this budget. Okay, so the fifty-five plus should be in there, separate from senior center. It's offered right. by a six parks and recreation, and not the senior center. Right, right, right. Yeah. So, so the fifty-five plus programs, I would see that in this then. They're included in the overall. They're included in the overall miscellaneous revenue and related expenses of whether it's seated yoga or the couch to 5K program. The reason I asked is because I saw a specific line item like the egg roll or the egg hunt, whatever it was, very specific things. And so that's why I was looking for those items. Yeah, historically, um, some line items are in there because they have been collaborative events. Um, with Essex Junction Recreation and Park, similar to the Halloween. That was um, one of them as well, yes. Yeah, so um, historically that's going to show, and as we transition into how we're going to provide events in general, um, if they're gonna be on our own, we're gonna look more at special event budgeting. So any sponsorship or any fee to do it, or if they're free and how we're providing that. Thank you. Them. All right, thanks, Ken. All right, so this is uh, you got a question again? I just have a quick question. Yeah. I just thought uh, I was in the Halloween section. <laughs> Seriously, though. Right below it, the, 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 uh, this, this is just totally clarification. The transfer between town and village, it, it shows 100% refund. That's because that's ended for here on out. All right. What are you on one of the costing center pages or yeah, the general the costing center um, just below the the, uh, the okay. Halloween, the winter fall carnival, all the Easter egg hunt and the uh, 900, my 900. Uh, okay. transfer between town and village. Right. OK. I didn't know if um, it was a page lower than page okay. two. Um, but yeah. my, my question was just a clarification that that. Uh, Transfer has ended and then is planned to be. Ended. Correct. Yes, that's not yep. happening anymore. Mm -hmm. All right. So the intent here is inf provide information. We'll come back again and we'll approve it. In Correct. Next so, meeting. Yep. All right. Okay. Great. Sally. Sorry about my Thanks. confused moment there. Yeah. <laughs> I did. Like, I don't know where you're looking and where you've seen it. So, yeah, let me know if you have any questions in between and happy to get you answers. Thank you for your hard work, Allie. Thank oh, thanks. Okay, moving on to business item 5E consider the appointment of a representative and alternative to the Chitten Solid Waste District. Um, we already interviewed Alan and I, and the Waste District is asking that we appoint somebody before the end of the month, right? Uh, the expired, yeah, the, the term expired, expired on May 31st. Already expired, okay. And um, there's also the question of the alternate. 
I have worked. Mr. Chair, have we received, or Tom Manager, have we received any additional applications for that position? We have not. Then at this time, can I make a motion or not? So I was going to ask a question. Does any select board members want to be the alternate? Marguerite stepped up. I think that's pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I want to. She, she, it did say unless another, unless a select board member. That's really why I was trying to get to this motion it. in here really fast. So I don't see Kendall jumping up and down. No, so no, no, no. No, I had to go around with that. No thanks. So I make the motion that the select board appoint Alan Nye to the two-year term to expire June thirtieth, twenty twenty-four, as the Essex representative. And the alternate to be Marguerite Ladd to the Chittenden Solid Waste District. Second. <laughs> I think Tracy beat you there, Kendall. All right. So uh, thank you, Don. Thank you, Tracy. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Motion passes 5 0. Thank you for that. Uh, and then, uh, town meeting TV. Uh, this is another position we have not gotten. It's been advertised, uh, for quite a long time. It has not been, we've gotten no uh, response for that. Is there any select board member who'd like to do this? Would you, you do it? I would like to. Okay. You've got it. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. I move that the select board appoint Don Hill Flurry to the position of town meeting TV trustee. Second. <laughs> Don't I'll jump in once here. <laughs> Thank you, Tracy. Thank you, Ethan. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 I need to abstain from the vote. Uh, okay. Kendall, I didn't hear you. Aye. All right. <laughs> okay. Opposed. Okay. Motion passes five zero. Congratulations, Don. Hey, Mr. Chair, I didn't vote. I have to abstain when. Oh, you abstain. I can't okay, vote for so myself. Motions... Okay. <laughs> you, so could. You... you could. You could. I can. Yeah, I can. You can. All right. Leave it then. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sorry. No, I just didn't know you could do that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay, so we do have a uh, executive session item that was added to the agenda, but we'll circle back to those motions at the end. Mm -hmm. uh, consent agenda. Tracy. Move to approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you, Don. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, consent agenda approved, 5-0. Moving on to reading file. The board member comments. I would like to thank Dennis Lutz for the awesome report that he left us. That has got to be the most complete report that I've ever read. It was awesome. It was easy to read. It was easy to understand. And I loved the ending when he listed everybody's names that he had worked with. It was like, oh. wow. <laughs> so. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you for that, Don. I, I personally haven't made it all the way through it. So you spoiled the you, you spoiled the ending though. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> In true Dennis fashion, it is very thorough. <laughs> Ethan. Uh, I just want to make the, the comment um, that we still have uh, staffing levels on the table and as long as we so we have Kendall at the next meeting, I'd like to bring that. Um, I don't know, Kendall. What do you think about that? Do you need to talk about staffing, or with that he talked about when we get to budgeting for FY twenty four? I I think we could probably go over the budget. I've had some conversations with Greg, and everybody's very aware that we don't want to hire folks if we ever have to let them go. So I guess at this point, we'll wait for the budget. That's okay. You okay with that, Ethan? I'm okay with it. I just, it okay. was tabled and yep. I wanted to yep. make sure that we brought it up. Yep. Thank you. 
I did have, an, and maybe I didn't read the letter from the Agency of Transportation. So they still have to meet to decide about that section. It's not really a done deal. Is that what I read or not? It it is everything, a done deal, but they're just gonna okay. everything that that I understand from the way it's happened in the past and what I'm told is that it's basically a done deal um, based on the recommendation from the VTrans engineers, but the traffic board um, has to approve it. So that's. Uh, Wednesday, um, Wednesday afternoon, Dennis and I are going to go and represent the town just to, to make our presence known, let them know that we did our study. Um, fortunately, we don't expect to change, but okay. we will be there and do what we can. I was just curious the way they the way they worded that letter. It was like, well, are you going to accept you know what the results or not? Are you okay? Thank you. And so the the individual that that initiated the question also has been notified that the hearing is coming up and so they may attend to and, okay. and it's up to them to represent themselves if they choose to ethan make another comment yes you may speaking of e-trans anybody notice today i was feeding the cows and on my way home there's a green arrow from yeah. towers to 128 yeah and my question is and i, and I haven't seen it yet because i haven't I, I got my green my double green no. Is there a green arrow coming from Towers and 15? Because if so, that's petrifying. Not at the same time. Okay. Just wanted to... <laughs> I didn't know. I I'm like, There's no way that's happening. Yeah, I went, so, I, went, I, went, I, went yeah, I went. for a walk this morning and I saw them out there. The, putting it up? Putting so it up. Today. And I'm like, I was like oh, okay. there's four lights on there. I wonder what the heck... It... And then on my way driving here today, I saw the green arrow. And yeah. And I haven't seen it yet from the Route 15 side, but right. I assume it's a green arrow going the other way. One, it's green because the, the problem is there are plenty of people who are unfamiliar with that intersection that come to that, and you're sitting there at a red light yeah. on Towers Road. They think you're going to come across, and they just sit there mm -hmm. expecting you to go because they want to turn left. Because it's not, there's nothing that says you can just go, you no. can make a left turn. Left on green. Okay. So yeah, I think that's finally. I been... saw it today, and I was like, "That's so dangerous." If that's what I think it is, no, no, it's not. It's not simultaneous. Uh, yeah. No. Cool. <laughs> uh, let's see. Was there anything I wanted to bring up here? Mm. I would. I would just add the comment that uh, welcome aboard to our new public works director and our new community director. Yep. Yep. Uh, both both excellent excellent people yep all right make the motion we accept the reading file do i have to do that nope that? we're good never mind no, no i can't remember where i have to do this all right yeah 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 so uh next uh thing is we need to circle back to uh executive session motion i move that the select board make the specific finding that the general that general public knowledge of pending or probable civil life litigation to which the public body is or may be party would place the town at a substantial disadvantage. Second. Thank you, Don. Thank you, Tracy. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion passes 5-0. I move that the select board enter into executive session to discuss pending or probable civil litigation to which the public body is or may be a party to pursuant of one DSA 313 A1E to include the town manager and deputy mayor. Second. Thank you, Don. Thank you, Tracy. Any further discussion? The question is, there's no reason to come back to this meeting. Nope. So we will adjourn directly from the uh, executive session. So we won't be coming back for those that are in the room or online. And, um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion passes 5-0. We'll uh, be going upstairs for this. Mm -hmm.